Hello everyone and welcome to What's Going On with Corey and Lynette. Today we're here with um, VAPA President, that's Visual Arts and Performing Arts Booster, Devin Bola, and the Visual Performing Arts Director at MHHS, Troy Rexel. We're going to start with Troy. So Troy, why don't you, you've got something coming up. Why don't you go ahead and just give us a little information about what you do and then just tell us about your upcoming events. It sounds sure. pretty cool. Uh, we actually have something going on all the time. Um, our kids are really, really involved with what we're doing. Um, we came off of a really successful marching band season and supporting our school sports teams. Um, but now we're into something called winter percussion. And winter percussion is an activity where you take the marching drum line and then you have melody and like keyboards and marimbas and xylophones. And so uh, we're really lucky that we have the support of the district and of the administration at the high school because we're allowed to, and able to do things that a lot of first year schools don't do. One of those is hosting a competition for um, a winter percussion competition through the Northern California Percussion Alliance. And so when I approached them, I said, okay, well, are you sure you're okay with doing this? Because it's a lot of work. And I said, well, yeah, we're down to four. We've got great facilities. We've got um, great parents that are willing to work hard on this. So they said, okay. So as I started taking a look at the signups, we actually have 25 schools coming from all over the state of California. So 25 schools are going to be at the high school. Yeah, they're going to descend, descend on us. They're going to descend yeah. on us. Hopefully they bring wow. food because there's nowhere to show. <laughs> Where are they going to park? They are no, there's plenty of parking at Mountain House. The high school I only asked because I'm like one street over. So. Yeah, there's tons of parking at Mountain High School. So there's that back lot. Maybe you didn't see that one. Yeah. So what day is that that's coming <laughs> that's up? That's actually going to be on March 14th. And uh, they just gave me an updated schedule That's last cool. night and said that we're going to be starting the show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then it's going to run till about 7.30 in the evening. And again, it's going to host, uh, we're going to host 24 different schools besides ourselves who are performing. One of the schools is actually coming as far as from Glencoe, Oregon. How do we come see it? Um, if you come out to the high school on that day at 3 o'clock, um, there is an entrance fee of $10. All the proceeds go to our program at MHHS as well as all the proceeds from the concessions as well. And is that so, 10 for adults and students? Yes, it is. Okay. And it's in the multi-purpose room or is it in the We are actually taking over the entire school, nice. to be honest with you. So I like it. It's going to be in the large gym. We have a rain plan if there's rain, but we don't have to worry about that because it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. It is. So, but it's, it's just going to be, there's going to be so much excitement and there's going to be so much energy because people are going to be able to, just as you come into park, you're going to hear drums everywhere. You're going to be see, see, seeing tons of kids. There's like 15 to 20 kids in each of the groups. Oh, so wow. what are you They're guys gone. doing for dinner? Do you have any plans to sell them anything? Like yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, we're going to, I think we have the tri-tip guy coming out of this truck, and then we're going to have a few other vendors as well as you get the standard trucks? band concession. Did we get what? Did you get food trucks? A few, yeah. Ooh, who's going to be there? So, so far, the tri-tip guy, we've got the um, Italian ice. I think it's... Jack Frost or Ohana? Jack Frost. Okay. And then um, the uh, cupcakes, the tea lady. So we're going to have a few different people. We're still working on getting that all together. And then we'll be selling, you know, hot dogs, nachos, that kind Standard of stuff as well. Stuff Standard. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We're going to mix it up, add some other things into it. So it's a fun event that, you know, we don't get a lot of big things coming to Mountain House. Yeah. So I think it'll be really exciting. And as somebody that's new to all of this, I didn't really understand how incredibly cool these competitions are. But just seeing the variety of music that's played, the energy that's involved, it's just, it's really impressive and worth checking out. I think we're all new to it, so it's, it's probably going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I imagine I'll probably be able to hear it from my house. Probably. <laughs> if you're anywhere within Wickland or Bethany, yeah. 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 I'm, like, I'm like a block away from the stadium. It's so. for our little kids to see the bigger kids doing it. That's right. what I'm saying. I think the attraction is worth it. Well, that, so. that brings up a good question. So you're Dennis. you're in charge of, um, or you're, you're overseeing all of the musical programs. Do you feel yes. like um, do you feel like our elementary, our K-8 school is providing any sort of like proper basis for trying to get students in this freshman a little more ready to enjoy band, or do you feel like maybe we should be putting a few more resources towards that for our K-8s? I think we're working really hard to get to where we need to be, and we're seeing actually a, 
kind of a renewed commitment from the school district because we are going to be hiring two new elementary teachers next year. And then with the new plan that we've come up with for a traveling music team, I think we're really going to have a great opportunity to service the kids the way it needs to be done. And so um, the, with the curriculum building that we've been doing district-wide as well, I think we're, <laughs> we're really on the right pathway to getting there. Everything here is, when I walked in, I'm coming from Modesto, so everything was pretty established. But that wasn't a good thing in a lot of yeah, cases. So, that, so being able to walk into something where I can kind of say, this is what we should be doing, and this is the path we should be taking, has been really kind of a, a great thing for me. And then having the existing music teachers that we have in currently that have been really willing to work with me on things, we've been, we're getting there. Are we there yet? No. But we are working there, and we're, and we're getting to that path. So as, as I said, we, we have this new renewed commitment from the district, which is really promising that we've seen come out. So okay. Yeah, I know when that's probably pretty happy to hear all that. I have a trumpet sitting she's, in my house. She's, a, a, music, she's a music buff. <laughs> if I want him to learn how to play it, I have to pay for it, which I'm sorry, he's in fourth grade. That's obscene. Yeah. In my opinion, right? right. He has how many more years to get prepared to do anything for you? Uh, right? well, I yeah. have a set of drums, I that's, have a guitar, and I have a trumpet, talk. and I have two children that can't use them. I mean, they physically can, but he was planning on carrying it to school this year. Okay. He was expecting that, and instead I pay five fifty, and he gets a recorder. Is, yeah. this, is that building your world-class band program? Well, and that's the... No, it's that's, a recorder! That's the curriculum discussions right. that we kind of have to say as we go through it. And, and I mean, it, well, sorry, I was just saying, as a parent who... <laughs> opinion. I mean, my well, we kid know. <laughs> well, always we know. wanted to be in band. Didn't know how to play anything. We talked to Troy over the summer, and he said, well, so, bring her, sign her up, I'll teach her. And he has. And it's really done things for my kid that... I, it's it's something I'm really grateful for, and it's why I'm so passionate about this program. She's really found a sense of purpose in, in who she is as a result of the program. I want to make sure as many kids in Mountain House can do that that want to. Yeah, see, when I was little, first grade started choir. So you get the basic introduction to music, right? You learn, you know, you learn scales, you learn uh -huh. notes, mm -hmm. right? So then Go you get to pick an up, instrument yeah. based on what you're actually interested in. Right. Not just whatever the school is renting that day. Yeah. But that's what I was used to. So there's no choir for these kids. There isn't even, here's a sheet of music, let's teach you how to read it. So how do you know, well, and how do you know if you love something, right? If, if you don't even get a chance to Well, and that's, that's kind of where our general music classes are starting. And so, as, as I said, we're still kind of working on getting the curriculum developed. Oh yeah, no, totally. We are really not at your feet at all. Yeah. Don't worry, Lynette, Lynette and I are familiar with Rico's curriculum well, we, design. We have been, yeah, this has been an ongoing <laughs> yeah. thing that we've been saying. You know, we lost money. Where's the first place you took it from? Music and art. And I'm sorry, but that should be the last place you take it from. Uh, you're preaching to the it's choir. It's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah, so that's why you know, at yeah. two years ago we're like, okay, fourth grade is banned, right? You finally get an instrument, so we buy it, and then my kid finally hits fourth grade. No, no, not yet. What? I was upset at it not being first grade, but that's not even fourth. But a lot of people don't even know the resources. Before when we had our teacher, uh, Mr. Hansen, he actually kind of sent like a little email out saying, if, if you're not able to do band, you know, or you'd like extra lessons, I will come to your house. Mm -hmm. And it was easy because they're already associated with this person, right? He's yeah. teaching them the recorder, or he's practicing the songs for the winter concert. So someone they know that can just come around like from house to house mm -hmm. or have a little group session at someone's house for everybody who plays a particular instrument, but we even lost that. It's a lot of extra work, I think, for the teacher. I mean, like, ideally, they would probably do it during the school hours. Well, no, we pay. <laughs> oh, you so pay? We pay, oh. yeah. And they're certified. Yeah. <laughs> right? They're allowed to be teaching. The school district says so, right? This guy's great. He can do this. But it was sad to just lose that. Well, one of the things that might be good is just to, if we have that interest in the community to mm -hmm. start instrumental music at that lower level, start letting the district know about that. You have it. So... I'm just saying. The music and, we, and we have. Yeah. No, I know. I just went to a meeting with the school board. And anyone have any questions about the gate program? And Dr. Nicholas looks at me and goes, I know what you're going to say. <coughs> I said, yep, music and art. And he goes, all right, I'm working on it. Trust me, I'm working Which on it. Which he is. I mean, I did hear mm -hmm. at a lunch that I went to that that is something they're looking into. We were at that lunch together. Gate. Yeah, mm -hmm. other types of gate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were all at the same lunch. Yeah. We were at right. the same lunch. And I'm part of that committee. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah. you know, I think it's mm -hmm. huge because there's talents that kids have that aren't specifically math or specifically, you know, language. And, I mean... And it's, it's expression, important. right? Like, right. we want these kids to express themselves. And going exactly. home and building a robot may not be for everybody. Right. Well, and even with the design of the program at the high school right now, we're going to be offering kids opportunities that are not offered in Tracy. Some mm -hmm. aren't even, I mean, we're 
one of the only marching programs in the area. So I know Tracy High School does very little, but like we went out there and people were like, where's Mountain House from? Where's Mountain House from? And we're like, we're right near Tracy. They're like, wow, okay, that's really cool for the first year really for you guys cool to be to doing stuff like that. Who are those guys? Yeah. Exactly. Well, and I know there was a heavy emphasis on having Delta to high school, you know, like, oh, we'll share class with you, you guys use our kitchen and we'll do this. But we keep talking about some of our kids get out at 210. High mm-hmm. school's still going. If you guys have like a sixth or seventh period music that we can bring our kids over to, and they can get an introduction to the band room, to the instruments in there, and that would be amazing for them. They're already comfortable, right? We've had a few occasions where we have actually had 8th grade students performing mm-hmm. with the high school, which is really cool. And it does just that much more to fuel the younger kids' enthusiasm for the program moving forward. Yeah. We're such a small community. Well, we're actually running a junior high honor band right now for the mm-hmm. district, and that concert is looking at April 15th. So we're providing all these kids. A, with, the emphasis has been on gate. <laughs> so um, we're trying to give those kids that are talented and gifted that opportunity to come out and really kind of shine and go through that. Um, also, we've been doing things like having kids do county honor band and mm-hmm. county honor choir. We had six kids do count from the high school for the first year, which is great for county honor choir, county honor band, and con- mm-hmm. county honor orchestra. So um, it's just been, I love our community, by the way. It's just been oh, yeah. it's such a great move. Yeah. You're, new, you're new to Mountain House, right? I am. We just moved here in oh, you June. Did? You actually moved here too? Yeah. Oh, awesome. I, yeah. I didn't know if you were. You said you came from Modesto, so yeah. well, you're commuting he, out. The fire. Yeah. The baby was. Oh, yeah. You house. lived like right <laughs> in the car. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. You, uh, so, yeah, wow. that's, that's, we're not supposed to talk about that. We're a really exciting time. Yeah, if you really want to talk about today. it, we can talk about it. Quite I do. I want to talk about it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in the community, I do, actually. right? He, so, he housed a scared toddler. I still like part that I find particularly interesting about this. He lives here. This question was that there was a bunch of plant paraphernalia strewn throughout your court for a day? <laughs> yeah, there was. And so, <laughs> just soaked in butane? Nice. Yeah. Oh. And the cool thing was... Wait, is oh, that, wait, wait. Maybe not everybody knows what we're talking about. Oh, we could go back. Okay, Two so... Two seconds, yeah. Sure, okay, so Before last week or the, the week before, there was an explosion in a garage in Mountain House. The reasoning behind the explosion was apparently it was a honey oil, oblica- or honey oil um, operation. And honey oil is apparently some sort of um, really concentrated form of marijuana oil. oil. Yeah, it's hash oil basically, except more powerful. Apparently the way to make it is to soak a bunch of weed in butane. Nice. Um, Those of you who are familiar with the way, you know, gas works, as it turns out, butane's really flammable. So if you fill your garage (laughs) with butane and you don't turn the power, the pilot light off on your water heater, inevitably you're going to reach the point where it explodes. Um, Apparently it's very popular to explode refrigerators in the same manner. Um, so anyway, this happens. The uh, garage explodes. Um, and I guess there was enough marijuana that it was sprewn, or strewn throughout the court. So you ended up with um, a whole bunch of people at your house, I think, including a chopper. Is that right? Yeah, um, the life like came chopper, all over. Right? Yeah. And so... How exciting. It was, about, oh, yeah, yeah, I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like staying up all night while the police are outside. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, honestly, with, with everything that went on... Um, Welcome to Mountain House. <laughs> it, I know. Right? I was able to meet some really great neighbors, which was like the highlight of it. That's and then, the strength of Mountain House, I think. Yeah. The neighbors are, are, generally speaking, really, really exactly. great. Especially if we're pissed, right? Yeah. If something happens, we're like, what were you doing in our neighborhood? But, you know... Did you descend? <laughs> it, was, it was. It was funny, though, because, like, we were there, and then, like, you know, you get the nosy neighbors, but it really honestly wasn't like that. It was kind of like, what can we do? Because like, yeah, they you know, set up like a cleanup crew right there. Yeah, when you up your court. When you hear, and it's like 12, 15 at night, and you're like, did somebody break down my door type thing? You run down, first one, and then you look out the window. Okay, I can go upstairs, put some pants on now. Um, you know, you do that, <laughs> and then you figure out what's going on, and then like, you Let's evacuate. You, fire. Yeah, you evacuate your family, and then you're out there for two and a half hours wow. in the cold. But then you've got neighbors bringing you blankets, bringing you their own slippers, sweatshirts, all this other stuff. And it was just like... That's crazy. It was amazing. And then, you know, there's a little three-year-old little girl that spent about seven hours with us. And every time I set her down, she'd start to cry. And so I just... Yeah, you know. I'm sure it was very traumatic for her. But yeah, we did have some stuff left over 
for a day. And so the community was in, was very good about actually contacting my wife and saying, hey, you know what? We want to get that out of there before kids come by after school. And so like there was shards of glass, there was the leftover marijuana and got it out. And I like how there was an quickly. argument online about whose responsibility it yeah. was, right? You have yeah. you have a small group of people who were sitting have here. On, have you been on Facebook? No, There's an argument was, about everything. I know, yeah, a small group of people really who were expending all this energy trying to point a finger at someone and we need to call the sheriff's department right. to complain. We need to call the fire department to complain. But you have actual people who are just all right, let's just clean it up, yeah. right? Why yeah. are we sitting here and worrying about it? Our, our kids are riding bicycles through broken glass. Is this really a discussion we need to be having? Go clean, right? Get up, get a broom, or stop talking about it. Because yeah. it, it was hilarious that someone said, well, it's not that the fire department didn't bring the weed out there, right? So they're not really responsible for cleaning it up, right? When you put it like that, then get the guy out of the hospital, right? Bandage him up and say, here's a broom, go clean yeah. it up. It's not going to happen. Person who's responsible is no longer responsible. Yeah, exactly. Right? I'd only been there ten days anyway. Cut yeah. his losses. So the goal for the district was like two hundred fifty thousand dollars, right, for this music program, right? Was that it was two hundred fifty thousand? When I, I started, it was like this is I how know, much yes. money we're going to need to build this high school music program. Yes. Are you guys out with this goal? Um, we've done really well as far as getting what we need to start the school off, and so we're looking at a second phase. And Ben Fulker, the principal, has mm -hmm. been really instrumental in getting us what we need for the year. Mm -hmm. Do you so. have a dollar figure that you're at that you've raised so far? No. Or? Is that no. a district thing or like a... It's a district, 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 district stuff or the... Well, I thought there was like a, this is going to be the cost of the music program. They were asking, you know, you guys to come in and try to figure out fundraising efforts. No, I mean, they, the district sort of was actually sad. really good about just saying, mm -hmm. okay, we know you're going to be starting mm -hmm. a new school, so you're going to need this. And so... Um, Given the, the budget situation, I think we've done really well. So do you know how much the district has spent so far then? I equipment, know for a fact program? that they, they were very generous and got us about $150,000 worth of instruments, okay. which is excellent. That's some really nice stuff. Yeah, including the uniforms, which will be premiered at the 4th of July parade this year. Not so. at the band competition? No, we no don't, it's, that, it's a different type of situation. So, so cool. We'll be showing those off. So who knows well, running the 4th of July parade the this year? and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, with everything. Okay. They're so, so nice. I mean, we've. We, it's hard starting everything from scratch, but mm -hmm. I said, you know, we've been really lucky, and I'll, I'll tell you, I have director friends that are really jealous of the stuff. That There's no better place point. to start from scratch. No. Yeah, I think it's it's, right? it's really hard to start yeah. from it's, scratch, but at the same time, it's so much better because you, you can it's do it the way that you think it should do yeah. or yeah. be, and hopefully, everyone else agrees with you. Right? Yeah, you know, whatever. In the right place. If not, they could have started it from scratch right. themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So where, so, like, where the boosters come in and the money that we raise goes to things that aren't necessarily budgeted for, like, we need cones to mark off our spot at the competition so we can set up. It's like, okay, instructor cones. fees. Yeah, instructor fees. We've got, you know, um, just different supplies and things that are needed. We really so need are you guys covering money. transportation and competition fees, or is that coming from the district? Uh, it, it's sort of a combination. It depends on I gave what them a break the event this year. is. I didn't want to. I didn't yeah. want to kill the parent volunteers this year, so I put it into my budget. But we'll it's something that, that I've kind of eased we'll them into as we as we go through. <laughs> so, but yeah, traditionally the booster programs take care of things mm -hmm. like our instructional staff because marching band and music in general is seen differently than athletics. So coaches are not paid for. Right. So animal yeah, we have to provide our own coaches, which could be, you know, if I. The program's going to be up over 100 in a few years. Mm -hmm. One person trying to cover 100 kids mm -hmm. at the same time is not going to happen. I mean, it's like putting 100 kids in a math class and telling them, okay, make sure every single one of them understands that concept. It's just not going to happen. Sure. Right. So, I mean, it's it's something we're working toward. They're, they've been working as well on the, the trailer. Uh, making they feed the oh, kids. The, the trailer. We should probably we should probably talk about the trailer. So yeah, the trailer that, that you're mentioning is a, a, if there's a GoFundMe and the goal is to pick up a or to purchase a new trailer that will house all of your band instruments and um, accompaniments for travel to and from competitions. Is that yes, right? Yes, because right now we're we're very lucky because Dave Kaneski, he's a realtor in the area, has been allowing us to use his moving van. Um, we're packing that thing as tight as we can get it. Like Tetris. Yes. It is. It is, it is like Tetris. This yeah. just sounds like really good advertisement for a local business. I think so. Like Mountain House on the Move. 
Yeah. Mountain House Music on the move. Crazy of. Yeah. Contact me. All over the side <laughs> of the trailer, right? And so we might we might we have sponsorships available. Spots. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just sponsor this thing. Know, Come we're on. Go, we're a little rolling billboard right? action, right? right? And we have some mechanics in the area. I mean, so if you have a problem with it. Well, I mean, we would love to be able to put a it's business on the side of our trailer. We'll wrap yeah. it. We have, we no, have no problem whatsoever. with that whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. We're shameless. Our business is, yeah. I like shameless, it. the roll-up door, <laughs> yeah. right? List all the sponsors and their levels. But I mean, we went That'd to we went, we went to Merced this year. We went to Santa Cruz this year. Um, we've been traveling back and forth to Modesto, and it's like, you know, we, we understand it's our first year, but we see all these other schools, and the kids see the other schools with these fancy trailers with their logo on the outside of it. Yeah, know, it so. definitely takes time. So the goal yeah. for that, then, is to raise roughly $7,000. $7,000. For the trailer. For the, for the trailer. And how, how far into the trailer? How far do you we have gotten, thanks to the generosity of the community, $2,800. Okay, we're going to post that link. That link will be in the comments. Uh, do you have any big sponsors so far? We do we, have one sponsor, our first sponsor, Mountain House Matters, has been. Mountain we know them. Matters. We know them. They're decent. Yeah, a little right. bit. Yeah. They're, they're nice folks. He so, already. you know. Um, but yeah, we are looking to get more of those um, just to help beef up the program. What I didn't realize is, yeah, trailer, you think, okay, pack all the equipment in. When you're at an actual competition, seeing what that trailer is, it's like home base. You know, yeah. we've got food set yeah. up. We've got the kids have to change. We have to house uniforms. They need room to practice there's chairs i mean it's it's crazy how much gets rolled out to these competitions for setup just so everybody can be comfortable for the day sure. what they need to do. so what are you doing then to, to raise funds right now um i know we're trying to raise funds for australian and for other things um what's uh the performing arts boosters what are you guys doing to raise funds so what we do our primary fundraiser that we're doing right now you guys may have seen it is the bingo i've totally been the bingo i love and it's, bingo it's it's fun it's getting um more and more popular we're getting people you know from the community and then people that aren't necessarily associated with our community sure. but just heard about it and like bingo so that's really what we're going for we want to keep it growing and keep it more exciting um we do that twice a month and that'll be through may and then you know just other fundraisers you know as they come up different things to try and get the kids involved um we're going to be doing a uh Silent auction, auction, silent auction, <clears throat> and uh, some sort of feed. Yeah, some sort of food. <laughs> some sort of food. <laughs> and we're we're working on that. <laughs> um, that was April 10th. April 10th. And, and um, that'll be at the multiverser? Yes. Correct. And then our concerts as well. Um, our spring concert is the first. April 1st, the yes. First. So, you know, the more that the community gets involved with coming to the events that we're putting on, the more that does to support the program as well. So is there going to be any type of music open house at high school for everyone in the community to come out and see the facilities and the equipment and what the kids are up to? Um, roll that into the April 1st concert, maybe. Yeah, yeah we can do that. Um, go or one hour sort of pre-sort of roll-in kind of thing. Yeah, we can do that. And then we're also really looking forward to when, we, when the district decides to break ground on the actual music room mm -hmm. in the theater. Um, I've heard possibly summer 2016. So that'll be a huge event, but um, I think it's definitely important to get the community involved. Where, where's that going to be at? Um, the lovely bank of bark off to the right, <laughs> or so facing like, I'm the school. Quad, right? oh, facing the school from the front. So to the, the left. School. Okay. There's that lovely iron we'll gate, black later. iron gate that goes okay in between it. <laughs> so it's cut in half. So it's the if you're facing the school, it's the left side bark bank. Okay, so it's next to the science building, right? Next yeah. to the admin building and the oh, okay. MPR. Yeah, okay, so yeah. I was thinking that was a science building. Yeah. I don't know if there's a science building. I don't know. I don't have a high school here. <laughs> he just goes for bingo, pretty much. <laughs> I don't know. You're facing the school, and that's where your sign is, and it's to the left of that building. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's going to be. So you'll see it as you roll down Bottom Mustang. Map. You'll see it as you roll down Mustang, basically. Yeah, yeah and I think it's going to be something that's going to bring a lot of a lot of things to the community once it gets built as well. So how many concerts are you going to be putting on, do you think? We are we put on three a year. Three a year, okay. Which is actually one more than most schools do. Okay. Um, our next concert will be in late May, which will be a Pops concert. Well, April okay. 1st, right, is your next concert. April 1st is our first one. Yeah. And then May. Okay. Okay. So is there any way, and this is totally none of my business, but to get signage on that fence for you guys, upcoming events? Yeah, we're, we're working on that. We okay. had signage. I got the wrong signage. It was okay. 
One's still sort of hanging. <laughs> like, like the vinyl ones, you know? Cause it, yeah. Okay. I'm working on that. Because okay. that, that helps a lot. Or try yeah. Yeah. Talk, talk to, yeah, talk to Greg Holtz over Copy Station. Yeah, I think. he's amazing. Yeah, he tends to do a lot of ours. Okay, no. I will yeah, definitely. You can cut like little slits in it sort of thing. Yeah. Make up for the wind. I've hung enough yeah. stuff to know that, yeah, the wind so, is a thing. So I'm learning all this thing. as I go. The wind uh, is a thing. Well, most people get stuff literally off the fence. Like, I've seen people stop, you know, write down whatever it is, and then they keep going. It's like, oh, I didn't know that was happening. But, well, and then, of course, so, yeah. advertising in Mountain House matters, so it's always a good choice, right? We're getting there. Um, you know, it's there's a lot of work in mm-hmm. getting a booster program off the ground and all the things that go with it, so, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. Absolutely. The help is always welcome. And, uh, you know, getting parents involved to take on some of those things is also something. That's so we're gonna have like a drum line competition or anything like that's that. That's on the fourteenth. That's, that's a drum line competition. Yeah. That's April fourteenth. March. March fourteenth. March fourteenth. That's, that's, that's the sorry. percussion competition. Yes. Percussion. That's so. the drum line, right? So you guys, so we fit a lot of time talking about, about a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, talking about the music, uh, the music program. <laughs> yeah. It's also visual arts and performing arts. So, do you want to tell us at all about what your plans are for the? Um, Basically, the other arts. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. Um, arts. We have coming up. Um, we're. I'm looking. I'm waiting on facilities to be approved, but we're looking at the 23rd and 24th of April for the drama production of Ten Ways to Survive a Zombie Apocalypse. Spoiler: Do they live? I've heard this. Um, it is quite interesting because it's almost like a reset button on each time. So okay. um, oh, it's a, like a video game. it's a cast of maybe like six kids total, but then everyone else becomes a zombie oh, okay. at the point. And so like, it's just kind of figuring out how to live and some things come down to like sacrificing other people <laughs> or like having good game plans like, you know, tricking the zombie by flirting with the zombie. Yeah, I would sacrifice thing. people What all the time. age <laughs> appropriate level yeah. would you put this um, You know what, it is, it is written really well, and it's not written inappropriately for any age level. So okay. it's it's kind of, I like to refer to it as like a SpongeBob type of thing, because oh, like there's okay. jokes in SpongeBob that like are cleverly written so that, yes. you know, the adults are laughing and they yeah. get it. It's kind of like Toy Story, right, where there's this like jokes. Yeah, right? exactly. a lot of jokes. And so like the... You know, the cool thing is the kids are excited because they get to put makeup on and, you know, look like zombies. And then some of the jokes are just hilarious and, you know, up to date and types of things like that. Yeah. Referring to Britney Spears and, you know. She said, you said, um, April 24th and 25th? 23rd sure, goal. and 24th is the goal okay. at this point. So have have you, you cast it already? Um, cutting you off. <laughs> we have not done full casting yet, so there's going to be an open casting for um, MHHS. And okay. so... We'll go from there, and but we try and include every kid that's inside the drama class currently, and in some type of role. I like to kind of step away from it and then just tell the kids, okay, you guys are going to be doing sound, you're going to be doing lighting. Um, we're a little limited with the NPR, but they it's funny because the kids have figured out how to do like lighting combinations on our touch pads okay. to the point where they can actually make it look pretty decent. Oh, good. And so like the kids are running pretty much everything as far as the sound, as far as the the lighting, they're in charge of costuming. Um, we're doing stuff in drama all the time. Like there's going to be a unit coming up in the next week or two oh, about makeup. So they're going to be doing the own, their own makeup and things like that as well. Awesome. Lynette, go ahead. I, you know, you had a question like, hey, y'all. Yes. So um, another group is, is starting a visual arts program out here with CSD. Are your programs talking to each other at all? Not yet, because I just saw that posting oh, on okay. Facebook. So okay. we're going to try and contact. And then I've been also getting some information from a group based out of Tracy. Okay. It's doing uh, the Little Mermaid Junior. I'm trying to give okay. the kids as many opportunities as possible. Well, and Kelly Hendricks is involved, right? Kelly Hendricks is involved in yeah, some of that as well. Yeah, she's also doing Tracy. Scott mm-hmm. Snyder's the um, yeah, dra- people, yeah. drama director over at um, the Charter School, I want to say. Oh, I think you're talking about doing that some right? stuff, too. Oh, yeah. That's the Charter yeah. School, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so. It's like, I was right, right? <laughs> I mean, it's all good. The more opportunities you give the kids to practice and learn and perform, you know, yeah, I think that's a, goes, that's a mad house thing, thing, yeah, thing to try to get them sort of work a little bit together. Too, yeah. That, right? yeah. Yeah. Especially if you have people who are involved in other productions, like, you know, Kelly's at Wickland School, right? Mm-hmm. And Scott is at another high school, but they're dedicated to Mountain House. It'd be easier to get things you might need. Exactly. On loan, at least. I know we right. did for Pub Crawl. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's it is true. true. Yeah, and he does a good job with makeup. So. That's our next show. Yeah. That is. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just a good community to borrow, I think. That's it what, is. Yeah. It is. You have a lot of resources so. here. 
Uh, do you guys have anything else? Do you guys wanted to, to talk about anything that we missed? I, I think we tried to hit on uh, hit on as much as possible there during um, our time. I don't know if we missed I anything would, though. No, I just want to throw out there that um, any parents in the community that have kids that are in the programs at any level. Um, or not. I mean, our booster program is always welcoming new members, new ideas, new input. And if you have a kid that's going to be coming up through the high school, I really encourage you to come to our meetings, check it out, see what is going on to help kind of steer the ship. Yeah, I mean, if your goal in the future, I think, is to have a kid involved in the drama programs and the visual arts or performing arts programs. If your kid's not even in the high school yet, um, it's still, it's better to get involved now if you've got a fifth grader or a sixth grader. Like, right. you know, get to know people now, get involved now, because now is when the program is being shaped and when the, the program's going to be set for the future. You don't want to come there in three or four years and think, God, what do these people do? Right? Why is yet. it like this? Because right. yeah. right. you know, if you do that, you know, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. You could have been in there now. You could have helped now. Right. So, yes, and it's, we're it's very much about fault. <laughs> yes, I know, crazy. When are your meetings? Our meetings are the first Wednesday of each month at 7 p.m. at the high school. Okay, Troy, Devin, I just want to thank you guys for coming out, joining us, giving us a little bit of information about your guys' programs. A lot. Well, a lot of information lot about of your guys' programs. Yeah. It sounds really exciting. Um, just want to let everyone know to remember that the next major event is going to be March 14th, and that's going to be a drum competition or a percussion competition over at the school. You'll probably be hearing it as you drive by. Maybe stop by. Um, $10 entry free. Get you the run of the place. 25 schools from all over the state and even out of state. You know, this is a big thing for Mountain House. And this is why we spent the money and why the tax money was spent to build this state-of-the-art facility. It's so we could host competitions, so we could have we could have nice things. Be legitimate. <laughs> you know? Um, and the way to support those nice things is to go out and support the events that those nice things are, are holding. So if you have time and you're available and you're interested in even remotely in music, or you know, you, go out. Let you your kids see it. Time, Check though. it out. So I'd like to thank you guys for coming on. I'd like to thank uh, my co-host Lynette for joining us today. And I'd like to let everyone know that we're going to end this show with some video of the kids playing. So you can get an idea of hopefully what you'll see when you come out to the event on the 14th. Alright, thank you.